Welcome in, everybody, to the flagship podcast coming to you live from the Cotton Bowl following a 49 to nothing. That's right, 49 to nothing shutout of the Oklahoma Sooners by the Texas Longhorns. And uh, I am Chip Brown of Horns247.com, joined as always by the managing editor of Horns247, the one and only Taylor Estes. Taylor, I don't know. Outside of a missed 42-yard field goal by Burt Auburn that would have matched the largest margin of victory, um, 52 points in this series, I, don't, I can't think of much that went wrong uh, for the Texas Longhorns today. Yeah, not at all, Chip. I mean, this was a complete beatdown, honestly, of Oklahoma. And um, as you said, aside from that missed field goal, like in all phases of the game, I mean, this is just something that we haven't seen very much, honestly, from Texas. And it's just like one of those kind of weird anomalies. But it sounds like the team has been very, very uh, prepared to have a revenge tour after talking to some of the Texas players. And this is what starts the revenge tour. Next up is Iowa State, another game that they that they did have a lead in and then they did lose in the second half. But I will say that this game between Texas and Oklahoma was without a doubt, one of the the best performances we have seen of the Steve Sarkeesian team so far. I, I would say it's comparable to Alabama. I would say that game, but obviously better since there's a win. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we talked about whether this would count as a signature win for Steve Sarkeesian um, beating an, an Oklahoma team without its starting quarterback, Dylan Gabriel. He went through pregame warmups, but came out for the game in his jersey and shorts. So Davis Bevel got the start for Oklahoma, and the Texas defense just worked Davis Bevel. Um, this is the first shutout by Texas against Oklahoma uh, since 1965. 50 five, seven years ago, um, it, it, it all worked for the, for the Texas Longhorns today. Um, you start with that, that defense, um, just, you know, shutting down Davis Bevel, Oklahoma went to all kinds of gadgets and new wrinkles to try to generate offense. They had two drives into the Texas red zone and the Texas defense stuffed them. Um, you know, they went for it. They gambled a lot, did Oklahoma. Uh, and, you know, they had a fourth and two uh, at the Texas nine. And Moro Ojimo and Tavandre Sweat, um, you know, stuffed that run. And from that point on, Taylor, the momentum, the route was on. Texas led 28 nothing at halftime. And there was really no concern about Texas coughing up another second half lead as they did a year ago. Um, all the players and coaches said after the game, you know, we, we remember last year really well. And Steve Sarkeesian said that game uh, is not going to define us. And so Texas comes out in the second half and just continues the beat down 49 to nothing. Uh, they end up with 11 tackles for loss, three sacks, and um, Oklahoma not able to do much at all in the passing game and even the running game. Um, Texas holds them under four yards per carry, Taylor. And Quinn Ewers obviously picks up where he left off against Alabama. It was astounding. His first half was amazing. He had an interception in the third quarter, but he got off. Um, he was 14 of 16 to start when Texas took a 21 nothing lead, had a quarterback rating of 222.2. This is a guy who hasn't played in four games, Taylor. Yeah, I mean, almost a, a month there. Chip, uh, I, I feel for our listeners right now because you are dealing with the uh, the audio issues that sometimes you can see behind the scenes with me and Chip, but you apparently have an echo, so check your phone because I think I sent you some uh, <laughs> ways to get rid of it. Yeah. There you go, y'all. This is this is what we do with. But no, I mean, I I agree. I mean, Quinn Ewers was more than impressive, to be honest. I think that he was just. I I I don't know if you could have had a better comeback game, to be honest. I mean, as you said, quarterback rating over two hundred in the uh you know the first half of the game. I I what I'm trying to remember what his final one is, but still, twenty one to thirty one passing for two hundred and eighty nine yards, four touchdowns, um and 
when you saw the way that some of the passes that he made, especially I would say that Jatavian Sanders touchdown pass in the the first half was a thing of beauty, to be honest. I mean, there that was a perfectly placed ball just in stride. And that's that's coming from, you know, a guy who hasn't played, as you've said, for a month now and has been dealing with injury and, you know, getting kind of thrown back into the mix in this game of all games and this atmosphere and having that type of just impressive performance and continuing where he left off, um, you know, with how he was playing in the first quarter of the Alabama game before he left with that injury. I mean, you can't ask for much more. And, in you know, I, I do kind of, I feel for Hudson Card a little bit because he's done a really good job of filling in. But this is, this is, I'd say the, the difference between the two, you know, I think this is where you see what you know, what Steve Sarkeesian wants the offense to look like, wants his quarterback play to look like. And Quinn Ewers just really checks all the boxes. So it was a really impressive game. And also I want to say like the defense, my goodness, this was just, they were getting after him early and often and continue to do it. Um, You know, we were joking in the press box about when the defense was playing so well, I made the joke. I was like, Oh yeah, I guess Gary Patterson put this defensive plan together since there's a, a running joke that we have with a, a lot of fans singing that. But still, Pete Kukowski, I mean, my goodness, they this defense came ready to go. The players came ready to go. And I do love that after the game, a lot of the players were talking about the revenge tour. And because that's something that you you want to hear that fire, I think, especially after that five and seven season. You want to you want to know that these players, obviously they try really hard not to tell us much they probably stick to the script a lot when they talk to us but the fact alone that they they clearly took last season and took a lot of these games that they did lose and especially the the losses in the second half they took those personally and I think that this is this type of statement was made you know and and that that's something that you should not overlook the offense obviously was impressive but my goodness a deep like a shutout in general I mean that doesn't happen very often in conference play in college football and let alone in this environment inside the cotton bowl where we are, um, you know, we're live right now in the press box here, but that's a hard environment to, to um, pitch a shutout and continue that. And they just, I just feel like the defense looked better than I think any defense that we've seen for Texas, at least in what, you know, my career, I would say covering in this game. Yeah. I mean, you had, uh, you had uh, two, turnovers forced in this game and i think that um you know the first was a like i don't know what eric gray was trying to do um he tried to throw a jump pass that fluttered right into the hands of jade baron and then deshaun jameson made a great play uh, as texas was trying to throw a deep ball right before the end of the half deshaun jameson played it perfectly uh, and picked it off and it just again, Again, sent sent the team team into, you know, the second second half half with a bunch of momentum. momentum. And, And, you know, know, Quinn Ewers, Ewers, in talking to Jordan Whittington, Whittington, the receiver uh, for Texas Texas after the game, he said, said, look, Quinn Ewers is so calm and so cool and collected that he makes us calm. And for a quarterback who hadn't played in four games, and you mentioned that that touch pass to Jatavian Sanders for the touchdown, but also the the twelve yarder to Bijan Robinson on third and six that sustained the touchdown drive in the first half, where Ewers is out of the pocket, he's scrambling, he's trying to make something happen, and Bijan Robinson is like, oh my gosh, he's trying to throw it to me, so he scrambles to try to get open. Ewers feathers that ball right over an OU defender. Uh, to be John Robinson, who makes a great catch because he had to kind of turn his body to make the catch. And then it just kept going, and Texas builds that 28 nothing halftime lead. OU fans, their worst fears were coming true. And, Taylor, we know how this works when it's going the other way. Uh, that team's half the Cotton Bowl tends to clear out, and they were clearing out in the third quarter, and they were completely cleared out in the fourth quarter. Uh, this, uh, this was, was just a complete, complete win uh, for Texas. Texas. Like we said, the, the unfortunate 42-yard field goal missed by Bert Auburn, who's been so good for Texas, Texas in games where, where they, they lost. lost. You know, you know he, he, he hits the 49-yarder against Alabama um, to give him a lead with a minute 29 left. And then he hits the 48-yarder 
at the end of regulation to force overtime at Texas Tech. They lose both those games. Today, if he hits that 42-yarder, Texas wins 52 to nothing and matches the largest margin of victory in this series, which was OU beating Texas 65 to 13 in 2003. So um, about you know that many Quinn Ewers interception in the third quarter, about the only nitpicks. Bijan Robinson went over 100 yards on his first carry of the second half. Uh, finished with 130 yards rushing on 22 carries, 5.9 a carry. Rojan Johnson averaged 6.3 a carry, had 57 yards. Uh, Jonathan Brooks came in, looked really good, had a touchdown run of 18 yards. Um, you know, Hudson Card came in at the beginning of the fourth quarter. Uh, he, he handed off three times to Jonathan Brooks, and then in came Charles Wright and Jaden Blue, and they all, well, four freshman offensive linemen, Taylor. So everyone got a chance to be a part of this victory. And that's, you know, Moro Ojomo said he didn't put on a golden hat in 2018 because he didn't feel like, you know, he had earned it. He was not playing much at that time. But he said it was electrifying to put that golden hat on today. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I bet it was. And, you know, losing four straight to your your biggest rival is is – something that I feel like nobody would want to be in those, those situation is just a bad situation to be in. And they, they uh, definitely answered today. And, uh, you know, I thought it was funny, as you mentioned, what uh, Quinn Ewer said to, or what B. John Robinson said, said after the game, when Quinn Ewers made that throw to him, he was like, I could see it in his eyes, like, Hey, get open, get open. And it's like, Oh, okay. And, that, and but still, I mean, that he threw him open. I mean, that was a, that was a really impressive, uh, play there and I just I mean this is just this was a it almost seemed uncharacteristic like I'll I'll say this like in our staff group text um I made a joke I was like I think it was Hudson that first said it like the um about like I'm probably going to jinx this but because they're on Texas is on pace for like the biggest margin or something like that and I was like I'm probably going to jinx this Red River shutout question mark and I didn't you know but I mean this is this was just a really good uh a really, really good performance. Um, again, on at all three phases of the game, except for that Burt Auburn missed field goal. And and I also think that you know the one thing that we have, um, what we've seen a lot, like Steve Sarkeesian. I know his his mantra is all gas, no breaks, right? But a lot of times we see the breaks come later in games, even when they have a, a pretty substantial lead. And he said, um, I think it was after the West Virginia game about you know, he, he respects the game of football. And so he doesn't necessarily think you keep going for it, you know, and you, you keep, you know, putting your foot on somebody's throat, essentially your opponent's throat, um, especially when you have a substantial lead. I feel like he, he kept going for it in this one. And I kind of liked seeing that because it's really hard to have the mantra, all gas, no breaks, when you seem to put the brakes on when you do have those type of leads or start kind of playing um, a little bit more conservatively. I didn't really feel like that was the case here. Um, and one thing going back to kind of what you were saying about the offensive line, Bijan Robinson gave a ton of credit to the offensive line um, that, um, you know, they, they really helped open up the holes for him throughout the game. I'm pretty sure actually chip at the end of the game, that it was all true freshman offensive linemen out there, uh, which is not something that people really want to see, but that just goes to show how, how impressive this game was that they were able to put a whole true freshman offensive line in late in the game you know, in their rival and they're, they're driving towards the end zone where it's pretty much empty because the, uh, you know, OU fans started uh, piling out or filing out, excuse me. But this was just a, just a really dominant performance. And then back to the defense, I just, I can't say enough about this defensive performance. I mean, they were just on the money all game. They, I mean, I kind of feel for Davis Bevel a little bit because he was getting, uh, he was getting hit a lot, but the defensive line really got the pressure and they, they, uh, they really impacted this game too. So overall a huge, huge win for Texas, um, on a, on the flagship podcast, um, on Wednesday, we talked about if this would be a statement win. What do you have a change in thoughts now? Do you still think this is Sark's first statement win? Well, I think, I think it's going to count as a statement win, a signature win because of the way that Texas beat down Oklahoma today to put a exclamation point on what you were saying about the Texas defense. They held OU 
on OU's final six possessions to no more than three plays on each of those six possessions for minus 15 yards. So OU's final six drives of the game went for minus 15 yards. So we talk about how the defense, you know, lets up a little bit, even against West Virginia, gave up the 18 play and the 14 play touchdown drives. No letting up. They, they were playing at their best, even as they were rotating in uh, backups. There was obviously a lot of, um, you know, sense of purpose in trying to get that shutout uh, that transcended who was in the game. And, and so, you know, kudos because again, 11 tackles for loss, three sacks, um, Texas outgains Oklahoma today, 585 yards to 195. And look, Brent Venables is rebuilding. He, he needed Dylan Gabriel in the game. Dylan Gabriel has 11 touchdown passes and no interceptions on the season for Oklahoma to, to feel good about themselves. They needed Dylan Gabriel in the game. It didn't work out that way. He was um, concussed last week against TCU. Couldn't, couldn't play this week. And that's why you have to have a you know, reliable backup quarterback on the roster. Uh, Oklahoma uh, had, had no one who could answer to Texas's defense. And um, it, it was, you know, for you could see it in the players' faces after the game, how, satisfying this was to watch Keandre Coburn and Jordan Whittington plant the massive Longhorn flag at the 50 yard line uh, as the golden hat celebration began. You know, Jordan Whittington said after the game, man, I wanted to, I wanted to pound that flag into the ground. So it would just stand there by itself. He said, but uh, that felt so good. And, you know, some of these seniors who uh, have, you know, been through some tough, tough times, to Marvin Overshone and and Anthony Cook saying, you know, just how satisfying it was. And he and Overshone said, if anyone asked me how it went down my senior year against Oklahoma, yeah, sit down. <laughs> um, because it was 49 zip. So just an unbelievable day at the Cotton Bowl for the Longhorns. And and Taylor, it's it's about where they go from here. Because, as you mentioned, Iowa State's up next. Iowa State's a team they led 7-3 to three in the second half last year before getting boat raced 30-7. to seven. And Iowa State's coming to Austin. And all the players said, look, we're on this revenge tour. Um, we, got, we got some other teams to pay back. Iowa State's one of them. And we even rode up the elevator with a UT employee who said, I want to see a solid game next week because now they're starting to string them together uh, and maybe play to a standard that can help carry this team into deep water when it goes on the road against Oklahoma State and at Kansas and at Kansas State. And that's that's the standard that Texas fans are waiting to see, hoping to see. They certainly saw it in the Cotton Bowl uh, here today on Saturday, but they want to see it week in and week out. Yeah. And they have to, they have to, I mean, that's, that's the reality of it. Like you, there's no days off. Right. And uh, just because you win one game doesn't mean that the rest of the games are going to be a cakewalk. I mean, this is, let's just call it like it is. This is a embattled Oklahoma team. You know, as you said, um, Brent Venables is um, rebuilding and I know Texas fans can understand what that's like. Cause it seems like Texas has been rebuilding since 2010 basically, but um, you know, I, I want to see it against Iowa State. And and that's the other thing. Like when when you look at some of the the way that some of these games played out last year, I feel like at this point, if you're a Texas fan, you need to be in a position or Texas needs to be in a position to where at halftime nobody's like, oh, we'll see what happens, you know. And and I feel like this maybe kind of starts the ball rolling in that direction. But you're right, it it just um really needs to come you know, show up inside DKR next week. That game's at 11, right? Uh, yes. Okay. 11 a.m. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, they, they got to bring the energy. They got to have an, another early start. They can't, they're not going to have the atmosphere inside the cotton bowl like they did, but hey, they've got to bring it week in and week out. And, um, and when we talk about the revenge tour that the players were talking about, it sounds like Sark is also saying that too, behind the scenes to the team. That's a good sign in my opinion, Chip. Yep. 
Yep. You want your uh, coach to have swagger. You want your players to have swagger. And I got to say this again, Taylor, um, just seeing how calm Quinn Ewers was coming back from have, you know, is really playing for the first time in four games to get off to the start. He did 14 of 16. Everything was on the money. Um, you know, he missed a few in the, in the third quarter. He had Jordan Whitney Winnington open for a touchdown. We shouldn't be so hard on Bert Auburn because, um, you know, Jordan, that would have been a, a touchdown. And then on the next play, yours was intercepted. So, um, you know, that was the, the hiccup, but otherwise, you know, he was so smooth in building that 28, nothing halftime lead that the players said, man, when you're in a foxhole with someone that calm, you're calm. Yeah. You know, Jordan Whittington said, if I'm in a foxhole with someone who's super jumpy and then I'm going to be what, jumpy. What's going you know? on, Remy? You know, yeah. But they they really take on the personality of Quinn Ewers. And I thought today was, you know, he's only played five. He had only played five quarters coming into this game. And for him to look that good in quarters six and seven of his, really his college career, man, he should just keep get, keep getting better. I mean, yeah. and that's that's got to be exciting for Texas fans because Barry Switzer, I wrote about it yesterday. Barry Switzer said the team with the best quarterback usually wins the Red River shootout. And there was no doubt who the best quarterback was today. Quinn Ewers uh, looked like every bit of the, the five-star number one recruit in the country today uh, back near his hometown. Said, grew up a Longhorns fan, wanted to play great and and win this game because it it means a little more. Yeah, and he said that he's always wanted to play in this game. This was a game, you know, he as you said, he, he grew up just down the street pretty much here. Um, and this is this is a, a huge game for him, you know, both as a player and then also just growing up as a Texas fan. And when we talk about Quinn Years, every time that we I hear players talking about his calm demeanor and Sark saying it too, the first thought I go back to is the the interview that we did earlier in the year with Riley Dodge, the South Lake Carroll head coach, um, how he said that sometimes he had to check himself because Quinn Ewers was so um, just easy, you know, calm and collected in a lot of like stressful situations. And I think, you know, it's one thing at the high school level to be that way, but the fact that he is showing that as a redshirt freshman, um, you know, in at the college level, that that's a big deal. And I, I, when, when uh, Riley Dodge did say that my first thought was like, that's awesome and all, but like college is a different game. It's a different beast. And the fact that he is continuing to show that and continuing to show that he's not getting rattled or especially in this type of atmosphere. I mean, say what you will about the end of the game with the OU side, pretty much empty. It seemed like, but you know, this at the beginning of the game, I mean, it was rowdy. We could, you know, we're in the press box, so we couldn't really hear all of the field noise or anything, but you can tell in the press box how loud that the stadium is. And the fact that he was able to, you know, after the the three and out to start the game, just to roll through um, the rest of the game was just really impressive. And I think that this calm demeanor is something that should not be overlooked because he's showed it in high school, his coach, that was one of the biggest things that he talked about. Riley Dodge talked about when we talked to him back in the spring was just how calm he would be. And the fact that he's able to continue to have that type of demeanor in the college game at the college level as a freshman is, is a special trait and something that is very difficult for anybody really, especially a freshman. Well, it was a, a memorable day in the cotton bowl, even, uh, Bijan Robinson's mascot, Bijan Mustardson, had a tweet ready to go uh, with Bijan Mustardson wearing the golden hat uh, with a tweet right after the game. Bijan Robinson said he didn't know anything about that tweet, but that's how good things were going for Texas today. Uh, and how about Jatavian Sanders now with the uh, lead in touchdown receptions for this team with five? Xavier Worthy had a touchdown uh, today. He has four touchdown receptions for the year, and Bijan Robinson goes over 100 yards rushing for the fourth straight game. And of course, the Texas defense pitches a shutout. Jalen Ford series. also, sorry, Jalen Ford led the team or tied team high tackles, which is, I believe, the fifth straight game of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Jalen Ford uh, is everywhere. And, um, 
kudos to these Texas Longhorns. Texas fans are going to remember this game for a long time. You don't beat OU 49 to nothing. Um, well, it took only 57 years <laughs> yeah. uh, for Texas to shut out OU. So here we are. This this game will be remembered uh, for quite a while by Longhorns fans. They had a splendid day at the State Fair of Texas. Uh, we'll sign off here and get uh, get to working on Iowa State. And we will talk to you again in a couple days for Taylor Estes. I am Chip Brown. We'll see you over at horns247.com. Uh, until then, stay safe and keep the faith.